Welcome to another episode of Eat Smoke Drink. Today we are going to review two exceptional bottles side by side. A household name when it comes to whiskey, Lafroig. The Lafroig Distillery. Fantastic. So to the left over here, we have this absolutely ridiculous presentation box. Distillery bottling at 44.4%. What an interesting number. 44.4%. 28 year old Lafroig. <sighs> Look at that. Embossed, brass, copper, accents, laser cut wood. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. I mean, the box alone probably cost 80 bucks or 100 bucks. The latch. Look at that. Awesome latch. And when you open it, look at that. Absolutely beautiful presentation. And then to get the bottle out, you have to take out the magnet latch a magnet latch and then take out the bottle but at the back of the bottle you've got a little notch so if you if you accidentally tilt if you accidentally tilt it it won't shut see because you need to make sure that the brand is in front anyway I love a good presentation box but this is just ridiculous maybe make the whiskey a little bit cheaper and they'll be good but no the reason why they do it is because when you are paying for something this ridiculous you do need that experience and the presentation box is an experience in itself okay so so i'm not here to bitch about the box um, i do like the box actually and then on the right hand side we have the 25 year old cast strength single barrel 175th anniversary caden head bottling this is 47.6 percent in a sherry hogshead 180 bottles so this was obviously released in the 175th run of that year um, a very special bottling um, they released a bunch of bottles with this green label with a nice tag and this 175 and that um, every single one of those bottles are just phenomenal what i've had so far anyway and this one here um, and this one here will be a good comparison today. So this is, um, the percentages is 47.6. This is 44.4. So for all intents and purposes, they're both pretty similar, right? The, the, the ABV, they're both pretty similar. Um, let's get pouring. So a little bit of information, sorry, I, you probably don't really want to watch me pour, um, but I can't really multitask either. I'm not good at that. So a little bit of uh, background on it. I'm actually going to put it, I'm going to put it here. So a little bit of background on it. Peated, uh, peated whiskies, yeah, they do get a, you know, a, a, they're a bit polarizing because, um, yeah, well, I mean, this, this, is, this is the distillery that is a bit fabled in the US because during the prohibition times they actually allowed this to go in and they sold them in pharmacies because when they smelt it they were like who the hell would drink Lafroig voluntarily unless he was sick and it was medicine so they thought like what is this this is ridiculous they just didn't know what to think of it um, it's polarizing peated whiskey is polarizing some people get into it straight away and some people take time I myself, it took me time to get into peated whiskies, and now I just can't get enough of it. But the next evolution from that is you get, so you, you get to young whiskies, young peated whiskies, um, great. You've got the heavy peat and heavy smack on the nose and oily aftertaste. But what happens is that when you get peated whiskies around the 20, 22, 25 plus age, you actually, it actually changes dramatically in flavor. Um, the peat no longer is your traditional peat. The peat subsides and starts to break down over time and tertiary flavors form. Just like when you're aging wine in a bottle, when you age peated whiskey in a barrel for two or three decades, you are going to get the degradation of the phenols and they become tertiary flavors that, unless you've had that age peated whiskey before, you just wouldn't know. And I'll take you through that today because it is extremely fascinating. 
So here we have the Lafroy 28 distillery bottling and here we have the independently bottled single barrel. So this doesn't say how many barrels were, were done, it just says exquisite whiskey matured in quarter casks, ex bourbon barrels and Oloroso sherry butts bottled at cast strength. So that's pretty cool, cast strength as well. Um, so let's get nosing, let's get sipping, let's compare them side by side. So let's do the Lafroy 28. Oh wow. So straight away, straight away from the get-go, you're getting yourself a hint of smoke. It smells like rubber, but very faint hint of rubber. Like when you leave rubber or kids' toys out in the sun for like months and months and then you know it gets wet and you've got that smell. You know, you got that smell of that wet, semi-degrade rubber in the sun. It's got that smell. But what it does, doesn't does have is that pungent peatiness. It doesn't have that pungent peatiness at all. In fact, in fact, if I gave this to you to nose, you'd struggle to smell the peat. What I'm getting though is smoked and grilled, smoked flame grilled and smoked grilled peaches and nectarine. Distinctly, distinctly nectarine and peach, but a grilled smoked version of it. I'm getting an old leather, an old wet leather. I'm getting a dry grass. When you cut the lawn, there's some dry grass there after three days. That dry grass. Hay. Hay, shall I say. And I'm getting a little bit of a weird smell to it, like a slightly decomposed fruit. I'm getting a hint of durian. I'm getting a very, very faint hint of durian. You know that durian smells like rotting fruit and rubbish. It smells like that, but in the best possible way. I know that sounds fucked up, but in the best possible way. I'm getting a hint of raspberry powder cordial you know like those cheap powder raspberry drinks you had as a child i'm getting some of that as well the tannins and barrel the tannins and the oakiness is not so heavy actually surprisingly it's 28 years old i'm getting some spice in there cinnamon sticks and a faint waft of incense smoke now let's compare it to the other one. Holy shit. So the ABV is, I mean, it's 3% differential, right? So not even 10% of, um, from, from the 28 to 25, but whoa, this one, this one is just so robust, so robust. And this is where, this is where blending distillery bottlings versus single barrels come in. This is, you can tell that the blending of the 28 has just been done to smooth out any kinks in flavor, you know, peaks and troughs, just smooth it out, just smooth it out. This one here, single barrel, no effort in that regard at all. It's just what you see, what you drain from the barrel is what you get, and you can get it on the nose. Completely unrestrained, violent, an assault on the senses, smells like varnish a bit of nail polish and once again i'm not getting that heavy heavy peat but i'm getting a faint hint of rubber in there i'm getting um stewed cherry like fresh cherry that's been stewed for a pie and i know this sounds weird but i'm getting like a Fresh concrete. You know when you smell fresh concrete out in the sun? I'm getting that lime calcium -y smell. Hint of hint of smoked and grilled pineapple. Mm, wow. It's completely different. In fact, after nosing this, you have to give your nose a break. 
to get to smell this one again. Yeah, or else, <clears throat> yeah, or else it's just so, so robust. And the difference in ABV is so little, but such a different beast. Let's try the 28 year old. Yeah. Okay, when you taste it, you can tell it's an Isla, but once again, the peat is so light. It doesn't taste like a normal peat. But man, it's oily. This is oily, a hell of a mouth, uh, mouthful, chewy, sticky, viscous, shall I say. Very savory, like, um, like almost like a burnt bacon, like or just almost nearing burnt, you know, like super crispy bacon. I'm getting that hint of fruitiness, but a lot of herbal herbalness to it as well. Mm. Licorice, white pepper, a hint of fresh ginger in the background. That's a hint. It smells like a cigar humidor as well. Like the taste, the smell in the back of my throat. It smells like um, a cigar humidor. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely delicious. There's no peaks and troughs in the flavor. It's quite smooth, but extremely compelling in flavor as well. It's absolutely delicious. Um, they've, they've, I must say, I must say, they have balanced interest factor with smoothness, with palatability, with complexity. They've balanced it absolutely, absolutely finely in this particular dram. I mean, I can't complain about it. I can't complain about it. I mean, not only is it a first world problem, but I actually can't complain about this whiskey it is a delicious whiskey right it's it's absolutely stunning and because of this cast strength you can't complain that the abv should be higher i mean you can't because it's cast strength so it is what it is what you see is what you get maybe one more year younger at 27 would have been better for more abv but i, I don't know it's just delicious. It, it tastes like I am chewing cigar tobacco. I've just opened my humidor. I've got some smoked fruit, some herbs, ginger, some spice. And it's just absolutely pleasurable drink. If you are an Isla fan and you love that heavy peat, funny enough, you probably wouldn't like this because it's not really that peated. Um, in fact, I've had that feedback from someone. They've tried it and they said, I don't like it because they said it's just not peated enough. Well, it is peated enough. It has the same amount of peat as any other Lafroig, but because through age, the peat does break down and that's what you're getting. 28 years, I mean, this is almost three times the age of your average 10 year old that you buy in bars that you, you know, that you get commonly. So, so, you know, you imagine the peat just broken down over three decades. So this is really what you're getting. Because in, in things like this, you will have older whiskey than 28. So they say 28 because the youngest whiskey they put in there is probably 28. Um, because by law, they have to do that. So there'll be 30, 30 plus year olds in this. Um, but yeah, absolutely pleasurable to drink. Let's try the Caden Heads one and see how we go. Once again, the nose is so different. So punchy. I mean, just chalk and cheese. I mean, to think that they're from two dist same distilleries, I just can't even explain. I'm gonna try. This is like the refined gentleman, you know? This is like the refined gentleman wearing a suit, wearing a Rolex, maybe even an Omega. And this guy here is Bruce Willis, in the first Die Hard, wearing a rubber strap Panerai. You know, this this one here is 
rugged, rustic, unrestrained, zero finesse, zero finesse, confronting dram. And it is so confronting compared to this one that I just, I'm just taking a break and talking shit to you while my palate catches up. Man. A lot more rubber in this one here. A lot more iodine. Meaty, extremely meaty. I don't know what kind of meat, but I'd probably say bacon as well, but instead of a burnt bacon, I'd say a soft bacon, just, you know, like when you put it in the pan first, and instead of it smoking, it's still steaming, and you pull it out, that's that. Um, it's like boiled bacon. Um, oily and fatty, and lingering finish. Absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning, but extremely confronting. This, I can drink all night. This, one sip and you're done. Um, oh no, one, one glass and you're done. Not one sip, one glass you're done because it is just so confronting. But which one is better? Look, I, I can't tell you which one is better. Both are excellent drams. They're different drams. I would never tell you one is better than the other, but I would tell you that if you don't like confronting, challenging whiskeys, then this will be the one for you. But if you can still find this, that's the question. I'm sure you can. I've seen them in auctions and I've seen them in shops around the world. If they'll be very pricey both of them, but this will be very pricey if you can get it This is more of an experience than this one and I'll tell you why because the 28 distillery bottling is delicious But it is a little bit too perfect a little bit too smoothed out and too ironed out. There's no rustic character. There's no roughness. It's it's a little bit boring it's a little bit boring um, and that's the problem with it this one here is exciting you know this this one here is the you know the stockbroker that snorts cocaine and you know is, is at any given time he could spiral down to nothing but he just survives this one here white picket fence two kids a dog in the suburbs that's the description I've got for you but they're both Fucking delicious. They're both bloody delicious. Mm. Wow. Look. Cigar pairings. I think that the first one, I would pair with a very, very light, light Cuban, okay? Light Cuban. Something that's not too robust something that will just add a little smoke to the palate. Now this one here though, you can smoke whatever you want with that. You can smoke crack with that because that one there is going to bust your balls, okay? So this one here is absolutely impervious to whatever you smoke with it. Um, and that's my, that's my advice. By the way, I don't encourage you to smoke crack. Disclaimer. Um, yeah, I just want to make sure I tell you that. And this isn't targeted for children anyway, but still, crack's illegal. Crack is whack. Until next time, thank you for joining me, and please subscribe and hit the bell. And I'll see you again. Cheers. Yeah.